Hello, this is um, only my second video that I'm doing on bodybuilding. I've done videos I posted um, of uh, um, my high intensity training method at the gym and whatnot, uh, certain sets close to PRs and things like that <clears throat> at a body weight of 145 to 153. Um, uh, but I, I, I've done tonight, earlier, um, my first video on just talking bodybuilding. So I got a, a playlist, no body, no bullshit bodybuilding talk, something like that. Um, in this video, the first video I talked on form, let's see if we can get that up here. I've been out of the gym the last month or so. I'm um, just working out at home with some free weights, uh, trying to get back in it and get back to it, get back to the gym, get some uh, proper weights going. Um, but this is machines versus free weights, and it's no bullshit bodybuilding talk. The first video I did was when people think the set is done is when it just begun. Hit training, four straps, drops etc um, so check that out um, but yeah this is machines versus free weights um, and I'm not doing a channel like Nick and Nick strength and power and um, any of these guys um, uh, this is just for, for my own just just uh, to benefit whoever um, uh, as I concentrate mainly on biblical studies and theology. I had up until the summer 40 YouTube videos and I have 209 now. So, you know, I, I, I put in 160, 170 videos and many of them aren't 10 minutes like most people. They're 20, 30, a lot of them are 40 minute lectures and uh, exegetical studies when it comes to biblical studies and theology. But my second passion is bodybuilding. And so I'd like to talk quite a bit about that with my training partner and brother-in-law who also is not just a training or a fan of training, but of tra a fan of the sport, the history of the sport and the sport itself. And so we both have that in common as well. We don't just talk about training, but what's going on in the bodybuilding world and the Canadian scene. He keeps me posted. Um, but machines versus free weights. Now for me, up until the last couple years I joined the gym, all I had was free weights. All I had was an Olympic bench, Olympic weights, like the weights you see at the gym, the big 45s, uh, the two inch round hole 45s, the, the big seven, seven foot 45 pound bar. I had the 45s, 25s, 10s, all of that, and I had the normal ones you would get at Walmart, one inch ones for the dump, dumbbells. But I had it on an Olympic bench, and then it got a little better when I went to my father's because he had a very good setup. Um, he had a power rack uh, with a power tech bench with his worth, worth $500 um, and, and Olympic weight. So the rack helped out a lot. But I noticed going to the gym the last two to three years with my training partner and brother-in-law, Lee, that my mind-muscle connection finally kicked in the last six months because I'm using machines as well. I'm not just using um, free weights. Now, if I had to choose the basics to get going, I use free weights. And I blew up from 135, which is my normal walking weight at 510, to 205 in less than a year and of course most of that was bulk I had a gut but I blew right up um, just with free weights um, now I put on lean slabs uh, uh, when I am uh, when I am training um, and so I noticed the difference right away with machines and, and here's the thing they both serve a purpose free weights and machines now, if I had to choose for most of the basics, it's probably 70% free weights, 30% machines, right? 
But for those of those that are against machines totally, I just came up right quick here with a few body parts. Uh, how we can do them without machines. Rear delts. Yeah, you could do rear delts without machines. You could do reverse laterals, bent over reverse laterals. But what's more effective? What's more effective? Um, reverse laterals on the ma machine. I find they they hit the, my rear delts very very well, and my training partner told me that's one of my best body parts, my rear delts, um, just slabs hanging over. Um, so you have that machine, and you have face pulls and these with the cables. These are my favorite for for rear delts, even though you can't do as much weight. I'll start out with these, I'll and then I'll finish with these not the face pulls but these coming up and these are excellent for the rear delt um, better than the the uh, the dumbbell reverse um, reverse fly um, so with rear delts with with free weights you're not going to be able to hit the rear delts efficiently in my opinion chest yeah you can do uh, different benches decline incline flat uh, different dumbbell work dumbbell presses uh, flies but what about machine presses what about what I really like the hammer strength incline press coming up down up I find a tremendous pump uh, doing that um, also for delts I forgot to mention I could never ever for years get sore doing when I'm do hitting my front delts, I hit my fr front, side, and rear, of course, in one workout, and usually throwing traps. I can never, no matter what exercise I'm doing, front raises, which I hardly do. But if I'm doing Smith Machine, Smith Machine military press, barbell press, I'm not sore on my front delts. Um, when I'm doing dumbbell presses, not sore on my front delts. But when I started recently, before I stopped going the last month, a month before that, I found a machine there where it was an incline two-handle dumbbell press, like this, or a shoulder press. And what do you know, I, I told my training partner, sore as hell, my front delts. Trial and error. Trial and error. What about biceps? We can get away with biceps with, with, with dumbbells and barbells, yeah. But what about what about when you want to hit brachialis here in this part of your bicep? You want to hit right, right in here. These are great, whether you want to do them this way or I prefer to do them this way. A hammer curls... They're great, but what's more resistance, I have found, is the rope hammer curls. M way more resistance with the cables than you're going to get with, with dumbbells, with anything with the cables. So there's much more resistance, I find, and so I rather do that um, um, than do hammer curls. But of course, when I'm working biceps, I'm doing preacher curls, free weight preacher curls. I'm doing seated or standing alternate dumbbell curls. Um, I'll throw in some rope hammers and um, and something else and hit tries. And so also another one that is great for the bicep for the pump on the on the two cables. You have the handle and, and they're coming back like this, and you're getting a good stretch on the negative, and you're coming up. Two handles, coming way back, a stretch on the negative, coming up. What a pump. What a pump. For triceps, close grip, close grip bench presses. These are one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Then you could finish off with these as a finisher. There's different ones you could do. But for triceps, how... Are you going to replace pull downs? 
I prefer the bar. Push downs, pull downs, cable pull downs. How are you going to replace that or with the rope or whatever you like to use, whatever bar? How can you replace that? You can't replace that. I mean, in my opinion, what's true for triceps is that there's two exercises in their free weight that will hit all three heads of your triceps. Your, your outer uh, lateral head, um, your median head, and the long head. Um, and that's lying tricep extensions, skull crushers, and close grip bench press. They'll hit all three heads. But we need a little more variety, throw something else in there maybe, one or two. And, uh, and uh, cable pull downs are, if I had to pick three, if I had to pick three, it would be the close grip for building size, skull crushers, line skull crushers, I find these too hard on the elbow and you can do more weight lying down. Skull crushers, nail grip bench presses, which I don't really care for, but they, they do put the mass on, and these with the cables. What about back? We have barbell rows, which is the best overall back exercise you could do if you're doing them strictly and not pulling it up like, like you're trying to yank a lawnmower. Boom. Boom. Tuck it in. But seated rows are an awesome warm-up, and you could put on mass. I put on mass with seated rows, because with the seated rows, you're not just working the lats, but you're working your upper back. Whereas with the rows, I find you're working mainly your lats. And what about the seated cable pull-down? These, or these, whatever, bear, whatever handle you're using. It's, what about these for your lats? Very important, very important exercise for your lats. Or doing them reverse, like this. You could do a reverse barbell row, but these are much safer. And this, very important. Uh, you can't get away uh, with that. At hammer strength pull downs, coming down like this. All the way up, extend on the negative, boom. Great one for the back. How can you ignore that? What about calves? What are you going to do with dumbbells with calves? You can go in the Smith machine. It's a machine, but you're using weights. And, and stand on the uh, aerobic uh, block. Um, and I like to do that and, uh, and come up come up with the weight but what about the seated ca uh, calf raises you can't beat that seated calf raises you're not going to put on any weight w without machines with calves seated calf raises the horizontal leg press machine you could use for calf raises the hack squat machine you could use for calf raises um, the smith machine but of course, I always, if I only have time to pick one, it's the seated calf raises. How can you do that without uh, machines? Quads, yeah, you could, you, could, you could do squats. What about leg extensions to warm up? That's a machine. What about hack squats? Squats are great, but hack squats are great as well to throw in once in a while. What's wrong with hack squats? With hamstrings, we have stiff leg deadlifts, which is the one exercise, the only exercise I do for my hams because they grow a lot quicker than my quads. Stiff leg at deadlifts, I started doing again instead of leg curls. But if you have a bad back or whatever, you're going to have to do some leg curls and other exercises, line leg curls. Um, for your hams. And so this idea that uh, machines have no place, I agree. Free weights, if we have the choice for basic compound movements to build mass, yeah. But if an overall body, you need machines. It's as simple as that. Um, and so there's no debate. It, it, it's, it's not um, 
uh, which one, but both. It's both. I would say 70% of, I would use 70% of free weights and, you know, 30, 35, 40% of machines. Um, we see all the top hardcore lifters use machines as well. All the top hardcore lifters did it. You name them, they did it. They use machines. There's been machines around since the 60s. Um, you know, the famous Gold's Gym. Venice, California, I think it's Venice. He, he made his own machines in the 60s. His own, he made all those old machines you see, you see in Pump and Iron. Arnold never had a problem in the 60s and 70s using machines. None of these guys did. They used free weights and machines. It's as simple as that. So I don't see what the big, uh, big debate's about when it comes to uh, machines versus free weights. It's not either or, it's both. And that's my no bullshit bodybuilding rant for the day or for now.